back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Glad you could attend. And on the Chop and Block today, we're going to fly into our review of Man of Steel. Yes, the story of Kal-El, a child of extraterrestrial origins who's crash-landed on Earth and developed superpowers and is taken in by a local Earthly couple. Well, Kal-El does his best throughout his young life and into his young manhood life in uh, trying to keep his superpowers under wraps, though it doesn't do a very good job of it when people are in need and he can use these powers for good. But he's still been staying under the radar until a group of folks from his destroyed planet led by General Zod show up looking for Kal-El, forcing Kal-El to reveal his superpowers to the world so they can save it from the destruction that uh, General Zod wants to do to Kal-El's new home planet. Ah! Man of Steel is fun. I enjoyed this film. I love this film a lot more than I thought I would. Now, folks, I am a Batman versus uh, more of a Batman fan than a Superman fan, okay? But even if I wasn't, some of the liberties and things that they took with the Superman character and his origins, I wouldn't have had problems with. They do that all the time in comics, okay? So the fact that they did it here, though I know we'll not probably have some fanboys reeling, I didn't mind. I thought it was handled well, but when you've got a story that was written by David S. Goyer as well as Christopher Nolan, you're going to have depth. You're going to have some changes in there for the good, okay? I really liked all the bits where we saw in flashbacks Superman's uh, childhood and how he handled trying to handle the fact he had superpowers. And then his dad, played by uh, Kevin Costner, putting in probably one of the best performances we've seen from Kevin in a very long time. His dad trying to instruct his alien son just exactly that, you know, maybe you shouldn't always be saving people, as he's seen for the trailer. Kevin Costner, ah, oh, you know, I'm hard on him, but I really, really liked his Jonathan Kent in this. It definitely fit the feel of the world and the uh, direction that they were taking the Superman story in this. Him and Diane Lane both put in some great performances for the small times that we have them on screen. Love, you buy into them that they're really, these parents really trying to handle this foster kid from another planet. And, and oh, I just love their screen. Every time they're on screen, they do. They put in some really rich performances. Speaking of Henry Cavill's Superman, Really well done. I loved it. I loved how they wrote his character. He's kind of got this little bit of a dark twinge to him, okay? Not like he's dark because he's Superman, okay? He's a good guy, yeah. But he's not the over-the-top good guy that we've seen in the past in Superman. He's a guy who wants to help, but uh, he's also, you know, very polite to, like, say, the military. Now. But at the same time, he's got in the back of his head going, you know, I, I could just kick your ass at any time. I'm being being kind to you and all, but, you know, you know, I could do that. <laughs> you know, so really liked his performance as Superman. Probably one of the better Supermans we've seen in a while. Now, Michael Shannon's uh, General Zod. The General Zod character was interesting how they handled it. They gave some depth to him. I think more depth than you get from some comic book superhero villains. Um, you know, uh, he definitely has depth and some understanding. And the way they handle his character, you can, you can see his motivation behind what he wants to do and can almost understand how he's justified what he's doing. Okay, uh, you know, is he completely evil? Well, it depends on if you're in his shoes. I mean... Really, I, I liked how they wrote the General Zod character. Gave him a lot more depth than making him a common criminal like we've seen in a previous Superman. And they gave him, you know, just growth and really it puts in for a badass fights in this. Which, by the way, folks, of all the fight scenes in here, all the action scenes are on the edge of your seat, breathtaking. Uh, literally from you, especially near the end as we get near the, the climactic fights. Uh, definitely had me hold my breath in some instances. Directed well, you could see what's going on, though it wasn't a 3D distraction. There's a little bit of areas where you couldn't quite tell, but for the most part, they were handled very well. You could see the fights and the punches land, and it's exactly what you would expect from a Superman battle. Carnage and things getting destroyed, and, and the fights just really made sense with most of the action sequences. I, I really liked it. But on the flip side, I almost think they 
did a little bit too much carnage, okay? I know it sounds weird, but it's true. I think they went just a little bit over the top with the carnage and could have done a little bit of less of that because, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where you guys, you really are, are yeah. I don't want to spoil too much for you, but let me just say that these fight scenes are exactly what you expect from Super Beans fighting, <laughs> but I think the carnage that was left was just done a little bit too much. They could have reduced that just a little and still had some fantastic fight scenes, okay? Uh, Zack Snyder knows how to handle comics, okay? I'm a big Zack Snyder fan, if you've watched any of my reviews. I really love how he uses the whole screen and visually stunning images, and he doesn't... He does the same thing in Man of Steel, but he doesn't do it as often as we've seen in other films. He doesn't always do the epic shots or like it's a panel of a comic, like, say, we've seen in Watchmen and 300, but when he does do those, they're beautiful shot and just breathtaking and visually stunning and then the rest of the film is directed a little more traditionally which is not a problem at all what i did have kind of a problem with though was a bit of the shaky cam a lot more noticeable in 3 distraction it really was uh you know you could do with less shaky cam hopefully they go back to more steady shots so that took me away from it especially in the beginning but i got a little used to it and i think he used less of it as the film went on so uh, outside of those two elements, folks, Man of Steel is worth your time and money. Fanboys may not like exactly the change that they did to the origin story, but I, overall, the depth of characters you get from this superhero movie will be definitely a surprise. The fact they embrace the science fiction end of Superman really uh, helped sell this film as a fresh look into something that's been covered many times before, and I really just enjoy Man of Steel. So it's, it's getting five stubs for me, folks. That's right, five stubs from me. I thought about it for a while, and I just, I really enjoyed this film and had very few problems with it. Sure, there are some flaws in it, but not enough to really take away from my experience at all or for make me come out of the film and go, wow, that was a really good superhero movie. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that